So this is just a quick review uh, and some description of these imported Tormach Tooling System ER20 collet holders. And when I say Tormach Tooling System, that just means they're TTS compatible. These are not actually from Tormach. Uh, the real benefit of these is that they cost about a third the cost. Uh, you have to buy these from eBay in a lot of 10. They list at $99 plus generally $60 for DHL shipping. Uh, I will say uh, that the shipping is lightning fast coming from China. I think I got these in like two or three days, um, which is faster than I can even get it from Tormach in the Midwest. So that's pretty good. Um, and, you know, at $16 a pop, uh, you know, maybe it was worth taking a chance to check them out. But do they really uh, match up to the official Tormach holders? Uh, well, let's take a look and see how they uh, stack up. So right off the bat, the uh, most important thing to note about these eBay holders is that they are considerably shorter than the TTS variants that you get officially from Tarmok. And it is worth noting that the ones that I have here are pretty old. These are five or six years old and before they were offering their uh, automatic tool changer. So these don't have the, uh, the ring around them. I don't know if the dimensions have changed all that much. Um, but I think they're still roughly the same. I have seen the modern ones, and they seem seem pretty close to this. The eBay ones, though, are considerably shorter, probably about a half inch shorter. This can actually be a benefit. Um, you know, you don't want your tool sticking out that much because it decreases your rigidity. Um, so maybe that's an actual benefit of these holders. And also, it gives you just a little bit more Z-clearance for uh, tall setups. If you have a vise or some other kind of fixture... Uh, where your uh, spindle is really close to your part, this could get you just enough margin where you might actually be able to do the operations you need to do. Taking a look at these things, um, really overall fit and finish, I'd say, is quite good. I was actually pretty surprised pulling them out of the box. The threads look pretty nice on them. The nut that it comes with is pretty nice. Uh, it's got some nice laser etching on there. The threads look clean. The grinds look clean. Um, generally speaking, just at a glance, I would say they look at least as good as the official Tormach holders, and maybe even slightly better. Um, however, right away there is a problem. Taking a look at these, which I purchased back in March of 2016, uh, the surface, the TTS surface up here, which actually is supposed to mate against the spindle nose, uh, is not ground. This looks like it has just been milled and then uh, finished, you know, this is blued or painted or something. Um, they did not leave it as a precision ground surface. And that's kind of concerning because on an official Tormach tool, you can see here, this is actually precision ground on this surface right here. And that mates against the spindle and gives you repeatable Z heights for one. But also that contributes to your overall tool runout because as the tool is drawn up into the uh, spindle fr uh, from the drawbar and from the R8 collet that's in the spindle, um, this will slightly move in any direction if if there's a, if this surface isn't flat and true. So you can increase your runout if there's like you know a nick or any any other tooling mark or anything else on this if it's just not ground to be perfectly uh, concentric and flat against this uh, three-quarter inch shank, uh, that's going to potentially show up in the runout numbers. And unfortunately, when I did do some testing, I tried to do uh, uh, give these things the, the best advantage that I could. Um, I do see some trouble with that. If I clamp them in the holder and don't actually engage the... Um, surface down here, I actually get pretty decent runout, uh, well within the, the specs that I expect. Um, when I actually fully engage them and pull this surface up to the spindle nose, uh, I'm finding that the runout increases two or threefold. You know, it's, it's a couple of thou um, fairly close to the, um, the nut. And that's definitely a problem, and that's much higher than I get out of the Tormach holders. Now, I tried to give these every advantage that I could. I did clock them in the spindle and find the position with the lowest runout, and uh, you know, got got them down, but still they were worse than uh, the best position on this was definitely worse than the best position on a standard Tormach holder 
Another area where I found a fair amount of variance uh, with using these holders was with what type of ER20 collet that I used in there. So this one that I'm holding is actually just a cheap, uh, you know, no-name import. This probably came with my uh, original Tormach tool set that I purchased probably five or six years ago at this point. Uh, so this is pretty, uh, pretty rough and tumble. You can see the grind marks on it. Uh, nothing to really write home about. Recently I had purchased some newer ones. This is a Syic SYIC brand. Uh, it's at least a notch nicer. These probably cost 10 to $12 a piece. Uh, they're, you know, you can see that they're shiny. They've got some laser etching on them with sizing and stuff like that. They're, they're just a notch nicer fit and finish than the other ones. The odd part, though, is that with these holders, I was actually getting worse runout uh, with the nicer collets. So clearly there's something going on also with the interface inside the nut and with the collet itself. So with these holders, typically you would take the collet and snap it in to the nut side and then screw this assembly back into the holder to tighten your tool. Now everything appears to work just fine with these holders. Uh, they look fine. They don't feel like they bind up or anything like that, but again, when I measured run out using, uh, you know, my simple test was just using this little tiny piece of shafting. It's a 3 8 uh, by know, like an inch and a quarter or something. Tried to, you know, keep consistent distance away from the spindle and all that. Um, but in those setups, I was getting quite a bit of variability. Uh, and I haven't investigated every last possibility with that yet, but curiously, the cheaper collets just seem to seat and fit better. And I don't know if that's just because they were maybe kind of designed for whatever slight changes from actual ER20 spec that these cheap imports uh, follow or what, but uh, just another thing to consider. Uh, I thought for sure that by putting a nicer, uh, slightly more expensive collet in there that I would get better run out, but that did not appear to be the case and does require a little bit more investigation. So the real question is, can these things be rescued? And while I'm not going to go into the details in this video, uh, possibly I'll do a video in the future on this, uh, I think tentatively I can say yes. Uh, whether it'll be worth my time, I don't know. Um, but what I did was I would insert these uh, into the spindle, not uh, engaging the, um, the spindle mating surface first, and then I would clock them around and find the position of lowest runout. And I was doing this just with a, uh, a 3 8 uh, piece of shafting uh, with a 3 8 collet in there. Uh, and trying to keep a consistent distance uh, from the nose of the tool holder. So I would find the, um, find the position where it would clock in the spindle and give me the lowest runout. And then I would mate the uh, rough surface up against the spindle nose and see what the runout uh, was reading. Generally, that was much worse. It would jump up by a factor of two or three. So then I would basically try to find the high spot and uh, carefully with a hone or uh, just a stone, take down that high spot uh, on this face and repeat, basically just repeat that process uh, maybe five or six times until uh, I could get the runout numbers down to a reasonable point. Uh, then I would give the entire surface here a uh, just a nice cleanup with uh, Scotch Brite, and uh, go with it from there. And I, in the end, I was able to get at least one of these holders down uh, to the same kind of runout that I was seeing on a Tormach. Um, you know, it probably took me 15 minutes or something like that for one holder, and you know that's an awful lot of time if you're if you're billing your time. But if it's a rainy day and I'm not doing much else in the shop, you know it's. You know, I can salvage this purchase anyway. I don't think it's necessarily worth saving the, you know, 25 to $30 or whatever you're going to save buying these imported ones if they're still being shipped without that surface ground. Um, I have heard of people doing the same process, though, even on the uh, official Tarmok holders, just to really dial in that last little bit of run out. Um, and I've even heard of people uh, facing their spindle noses just to help with that because... Again, as these things are drawn up into the spindle, uh, any imperfections on this surface or the uh, the nose of your spindle can can throw the 
uh, run out off just on, just enough to have it actually affect your tool. And if you're running tiny tools uh, on a on a machine that already isn't very rigid to begin with, uh, you're going to probably be breaking more end mills than you really want to be. So uh, something to consider. Uh, it's probably not worth your time if you're running uh, a shop and doing this for money, but uh, if you want to save a few bucks and you don't care about your time and you're just a hobby a hobby guy, why not?